Hey, I'm Daniel, and today I'm going to show you how to paint. Oh, well, not with this, but with something else, something different. I'm going to show you how to paint with light. Yeah, so basically, we're going to do some light painting. Let's get down to it. exactly is light painting. Now, your shutter is like your eyelid. It opens and it closes. Now, based on your shutter speed, your shutter speed is basically what decides the amount of time your shutter stays open. So say you have uh, selected a shutter speed of one thousandth of a second. That means your shutter speed, your, sorry, your shutter um, stays open for a thousand of a second. So it opens and then it closes it uh, stays open for a thousand of a second. Now that's so fast that I can't even show you how fast it is. But let's say you selected a really slow shutter speed of let's say a second or 10 seconds. So your shutter opens, it stays open for one second or 10 seconds based on your shutter speed and then it closes. When it closes, your picture is taken. So my painting is what creating an exposure, that's a picture, by using light and drawing into the frame or painting something with light to illuminate it. So um, I'll show you what, what both those are. Now people say there are two kinds of light painting. They divide light painting into two categories. One light uh, painting itself and then another which they call light gra graffiti or light drawing. So let, let's look at both those. Now light painting, what exactly is light painting? Light painting is when you illuminate the subject which is in the frame but you don't expose your uh, light source that is your torch it could be a torch or any other light source for that matter um, so your subject is illuminated by the light that is the camera t senses takes the light in but your source is not shown light drawing is when you expose your source of light that is your light source and people, and you can see the source of light in the final image as the final picture. Once the picture is taken, you can see the source of light and the path that it traveled. So let's say I'm taking an, an exposure right now. Let's say I've uh, selected a short speed of two seconds, and I'm taking a picture, and I'm going to do some light painting. So I move this torch around. Yeah. Now in the picture, light drawing would be you would be able to see the path that was traveled by this torch, the bulb so you would get a white streak of light um, to this picture you see you can see the streaks of light and with light drawing you can write stuff you can create designs and it's really cool now with light painting on the other hand you have a source of light of course and you illuminate your subject so your camera is not pointed at the source of light you don't draw into the camera, you draw into the frame, you draw into the uh, picture, you draw, you could illuminate an entire landscape, you could illuminate a teeny tiny object, or like I did in this case, in this particular picture, a flower was. I illuminated the flowers and the was. I just painted with this very same flashlight that I'm holding, I just painted over it from behind the camera. I was very careful not to expose my source of light. Now that that's basically light painting. What will you need for light painting? Well, first of all, the most important thing is your camera. That's what you're gonna need for light painting. That's the first thing. Second, you're gonna need a tripod. Just set that over here. And third, well, you're gonna need a light source. Yeah, any source of light will do, any flashlights or anything for that matter. Alright, so first, your camera. Now, you would need a camera with um, 
manual mode that is this little M over here uh, that's because you would need to change your shutter speed now most cameras also have a shutter priority mode which uh, in the Canon cameras it's marked by what is called TV so but I wouldn't recommend that because you can't uh, change your aperture in this mode I would recommend you switch to manual mode because you can change your aperture as well and aperture plays a well big role in uh, how your light looks at the end so that's about the camera and uh, this is not a DSLR well you could use a DSLR but this is not a DSLR this is a prosumer camera it's sort of in between your uh, point and shoots and your DSLRs it kind of bridges the gap now about your camera one more thing I didn't mention was that you would want to manual focus it because if you don't uh, switch it to manual focus then your camera is gonna have a very hard time focusing focus before you turn the lights off or before you start taking your picture lock your focus in that is manual focus and then take a picture so your focus is locked in and you get a perfectly sharp picture it's up to you what kind of a tripod you use tripods are not very essential because honestly for many of my light painting shots I haven't used a tripod I've just set the camera up on a stool like this one or on my table or even on a chair so any sturdy surface will do just as long as your camera doesn't move because a movement in your camera will blur the entire image and will spoil your light painting which could have otherwise come out well awesome so the only reason you need your tripod is to keep your camera steady but uh, tripod is the best because in case it's portable and you wouldn't find a sturdy surface anywhere you go now your light source you could use something as tiny as this single LED light that I have or something as massive as this uh, this I'm told is what they use to drive elephants away in this area or you could use something as common as a candle or even your cell phone so basically any source of light for light painting any source of light anything that emits light will do you could even use matchsticks or you could use a lighter now this lighter is pretty cool because it's got the flame at one end and it's got a little LED at the other so that's pretty cool so basically you can use any source of light for light painting you could even move your camera around actually if you don't have a portable source of light just keep shaking your camera and you can get abstract results which is pretty cool so you have your camera you have your light source and of course you have your tripod now there's one more thing you need that is a dark place it could be a dark room or you could just light paint at night. Now most of the time, most, I do most of my light painting indoors. It's in my own bedroom. So, now why would you want light paint? Uh, I'll give you one example. There. Let's say you're using your on-camera flash, on-camera flash, and most on-camera flashes don't have a very great range. Like for example, the camera that I'm using, the on-camera, the range of the on-camera flash is just seven meters. Now that's not a great range. And suppose, what if my subject is at eight meters? What if I had this flashlight with me? Now I could just turn it on, move up to the subject, and paint the subject. That means the light, the camera would pick up the light, and my subject would be perfectly illuminated. That's just one uh, example. I'll give you a few more. Let's say you want to write somebody's name. Want to make it really look cool. Well, light painting again. Light painting is the answer. You take a torch, light fix your settings up, and you write into the frame. There you go, light painting again saves the day are a host of objects on the table for example and you just want one object illuminated light painting again take your torch and just illuminate that while everything else remains dark so the camera doesn't pick up all those objects it just picks up the one that you illuminated now these are just three examples of where light painting comes in real handy there are many more ways you can use light painting in and uh, you can just be creative and just let your imagination run wild so basically that's why you would like paint and the main reason is because it's super cool and it's awesome.